a context, I just want to speak very um, briefly at this point to, to a, a wonderful Sanskrit scholar based in, uh, in India, Niraj Kumar, who's just done a comprehensive translation of the Kala Chakra Tantra from its original Sanskrit sources uh, and discovering in the process of this very, very lengthy undertaking that he's just completing, the first volume of the five will be uh, be published in India uh, in English uh, from this coming January. But in the process of that, he's found, you know, a lot of very interesting uh, examples of where you could say the Tibetan uh, translations and iterations of the Kala Chakra Tantra differ from its original uh, presentation. So, for example, it's very explicit, as he said, in the original Sanskrit of the Kala Chakra Tantra, that the empowerment and the initiation should only it can only be given once a year on the full moon and what you know corresponds to january so in other words we see how the tibetans have taken the tradition and adapted it to to changing circumstances uh, rather than actually strictly following the dictates of the of the tantra itself which i think is a, it's a very interesting process where we begin to recognize you know that this myth this prophecy can be interpreted differently uh, according to, to the circumstances in which um, the tradition um, uh, finds itself. So in that process, one of the other very interesting revelations that, that uh, there have been different interpretations of the word Shambhala itself um, and what the words in Sanskrit uh, actually refer to. So in Niraj Kumar's own uh, analysis, um, this word sham in uh, in Sanskrit refers to delight or a state of kind of ecstatic, um, really enlightened pleasure, if you will, sham. Uh, and the, the ba literally is behind the forehead, behind the third eye. So if we look at the subtle anatomy as it's actually represented uh, in the Kala Chakra Tantra, we recognize that this state of kind of enlightenment um, is accessed uh, in this point behind the third eye between the eyebrows in the center of the brain. So if we look at it sort of more innermost sort of um, yogic interpretation, Shambhala would refer actually to, to a psychophysical um, uh, location as well as a psychophysical state uh, that is achieved through the mobilization of the energies and uh, that are uh, described in extreme detail in the Kala Chakra Tantra, in which the whole universe, in a certain sense, is actually recapitulated within our subtle anatomy. So, if we really look at the, you know, the so-called six Vajra Yogas as they're practiced in the inner tradition of the Kala Chakra, uh, it's a sense of in which we recognize our complete co-mergence, coexistence with with the universe as a whole. So that becomes something that is, you know, we'll, we'll speak at the end, really is relevant to our own current times in which we find ourselves, in which we tend to, you know, have particularly in the time of, 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 of crisis and pandemic, you know, it's all about self-preservation um, and about how in the Kala Chakra Tantra is actually advocating for a sense of rather than this kind of contraction, which is so easy to do when adverse circumstances arise, it's about a state of expansion. And we would recognize that we are absolutely inseparable from the whole kind of universal process in itself. And so a lot of the images that you see of the Kala Chakra Tantra are representing that sense of the microcosm and the macrocosm.